They were just playing the call to prayer at the mosque over there. It's not exactly an uncommon thing to hear in the Islamic world, but when most people think of the Islamic world, at least in the Western world, they'll generally think of the Middle East and maybe North Africa, but we're nowhere near that part of the world. We're in Southeast Asia right now, more specifically Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. In Malaysia, the official state religion is actually Islam, and it's actually probably a well-known factoid by now that Indonesia is actually the most populous Islamic country in the world. So, how did Islam spread to this corner of the world? Indonesia has about a quarter of a billion inhabitants, making it the fourth largest overall country in the world. Of those roughly 270 million people, about 87% of them said they were Muslim, according to a 2010 census. Nearby Malaysia doesn't like all that far behind either. Though smaller and more religiously diverse, Malaysia has Islam as the official state religion. In fact, 42% of the population of Southeast Asia identifies as Islamic, comprising about a quarter of all the Muslims in the world. However, while there are sizable Muslim communities in other Southeast Asian countries, most are concentrated in Malaysia and Indonesia. Also a small shout out to Brunei. So before I get carried away with repeating the intro over and over again, just how did Indonesia and Malaysia become so Islamic? Islam started in the Arabian Peninsula in the 7th century AD and from there quickly spread throughout the Middle East and Northern Africa was the conquest of the early caliphs, reaching from Pakistan to Portugal to... P P Persia? Nevertheless, Islam didn't spread so quickly to the east, at least not in the same way it spread westwards. During this time though, the Silk Road trade networks were more in effect than ever, with well-traveled trade routes connecting Europe and Africa with Eastern Asia by land and by sea. It was through these trade networks that Islam would spread to the east. The Silk Road is a very notable cause for the spread of Islam across the south of Asia, as it also wasn't the only religion to have made use of the Silk Road to spread. Buddhism, a religion that started in northern India and southern Nepal, took advantage of the Silk Road and now dominates virtually all of East Asia because of it. Islam did have a somewhat slow uprising in this area though. This new religion, brought on by some sailors, preachers, and Sufi mystics from faraway lands, obviously didn't become the dominant religion overnight. Islam initially started to spread around the coasts of Sumatra by the 9th century, but these communities didn't spread much at first. Before Islam started to gain a foothold in this part of the world, the various kingdoms around here were primarily either Buddhist or Hindu, or even a combination of the two, like the Indonesian Mahapajit, Mapajahit, Majapahit, Roman, Majapahit Empire. Matter of fact, the world's largest Buddhist temple, Borobudur, is located on the Indonesian island of Java, built during the 9th century AD under the Sailantra dynasty. In fact, one very likely contributing factor to the spread of Islam in this area was the presence of various mystic Sufi orders, as many Islamic teachings were even combined with various previously established Hindu-Buddhist teachings, basically amalgamating Islam with some of the more native beliefs of the area. Around the 10th and 11th centuries, Muslim traders started setting up shop in Aceh, on the northwesternmost tip of the island of Sumatra. Malacca, the main choke point of the region for Oceanic trade, also has many Islamic traders and scholars, and it's likely from there that the religion spread throughout the rest of the region. There are multiple factors that went into Islam spreading into the Malay, Indonesian, Nusantara archipelago though. One other likely factor being the mass translation of many Islamic holy texts into Malay and Javanese. You know, the languages people actually speak in Malaysia and Java. One more factor was the ruling classes embracing Islam, especially the rulers of Malacca, who started converting to Islam in the 15th century, which definitely wasn't unconsequential. That is definitely a bit late to be the one true source though, since Islam had already been prevalent in the region for several hundred years, with Marco Polo even going to states like Perlak and saying, yep, they're Islamic alright. So while Islam initially spread slowly amongst the local people, so too was this the case with the rulers of the area. In fact, the island of Java didn't get its first true sultan until 1641. So why is it important to talk about the spread of Islam into Southeast Asia? Or at least important enough for me to make a video about it. Well, besides me wanting to make a video relating to having gone to Kuala Lumpur, I feel it's important to recognize the fact that the Islamic world isn't just the Middle East and Northern Africa, but many other places as well. The country with the most Muslims is Indonesia, while the country with the second highest number is India. Also, the northernmost Islamic-majority country in the world is Kazakhstan. 
In fact, just this map can tell us many different things about the Balkans, or the Caucasus, or Western China, and just how these places may impact the geopolitical situations in these areas. Religion plays a big role in daily life around the world, and has especially played a big role in world history, so just understanding what people believe and where they do so can help one understand the world in all different new ways. Or at least tell people why they shouldn't expect to get many pork dumplings in Jakarta. Thank you as always for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, do consider liking, subscribing, and supporting Canubus on Patreon to help everyone learn something new every Sunday. Whether or not you can or want to support the channel though, I will still see you next week with a video from Singapore.